Hey, this is Stu, and of course I'm at the beautiful Purple Valley, and I'm here with Mark Roberts again. And <laughs> we did a workshop here one of the afternoons on jumping, jumping through, jumping back, and the students thought, wow, this is brilliant, and we want it on record so we can refer to it, and of course you guys get to watch it too. So here we are, and that's what we're going to do today. And you've got lots of tips for us, haven't you? Absolutely, Absolutely. Stu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. So how do you want to start? Uh, start uh, I'll start from standing. Yeah. Good. And I'll just move out the way. You can shout at me if you need me. Okay. So first things first, um, I just want to work on the scapula movement. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I should turn the side on view for these guys. So if we bring the arms up here, I want to just be able to protract the scapula and then also retract. Okay. So protract and retract without the elbows bending. So often when people try to retract, they end up bending the elbows like this. And then with the protraction, without the shoulders coming up toward the ears. So the shoulders are going to stay pulled down toward the hips yeah. with the protraction. Keep the shoulders depressed for retraction. And the rest of your body is staying absolutely still, I can yeah, see. Yeah, so I'm not, as I protract, I'm not rounding, rounding. the upper back. And as I retract, I'm not arching yeah. the lower back. Okay, so just keeping the spine in neutral and just trying to isolate the movement here. Uh, we can do a similar thing with the thoracic spine uh, by first, or well actually this first looking at the pelvis. So the main two movements of the pelvis being that anterior tilt and posterior tilt. So it's important for everyone to understand how to do that with the knees straight. So tilting the pelvis forward, so the lumbar comes into extension, and then posterior tilt and bringing the lumbar spine into a slight flexion. And then we can bend the knees with that posterior tilt, and then we try to isolate the movement in the thoracic spine by and without using the scapula. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we hug the shoulders like this, so we're in a uh, flexion and then I'm going to go to the side so side flexion and then rotating then to thoracic extension rotation left side side flexion left side and back to flexion and this is just to work on the mobility of that area whilst keeping the pelvis in the same position yeah just to understand how to isolate the thoracic sp spine right you know because everyone lo wants to talk about being able to open up their upper back and so yeah, on yeah but they often people don't really understand where the upper back is and how to move it yeah. independently of, of the rest else. of the body yeah because yeah, exactly. i know if i was doing that now my hips would be moving yeah so imagine. this one people <laughs> often <laughs> yeah, when exactly. they're doing it they end up doing <laughs> like this exactly okay so those are just good drills to add in like just to to uh, before you start your practice so just a few rounds this uh, anterior tilt posterior tilt and then this one five circles yeah. one direction five circles other direction and then also just isolating the scapula oh we didn't do that the, so this uh, shoulder circle so okay. you can do that as well so, so i was doing uh so there's protraction yeah. and retraction then elevation and depression so you can make a circle yeah so forward up back and down and forward up back and, and down. again you're just keeping everything yeah. else the same just head, keeping everything everything. Yeah. yeah so yeah you're going to try and keep the head uh above the shoulders so not sticking the head forward yeah. and then you can go back the other way so retract when you retract to make sure that the elbow doesn't bend mm -hmm. and then elevate protract and depress and so this is an important movement as you do that depression you see the lats engage yeah and you can't really see it but uh, the the pec minor yeah, there's a bit of a chest there <laughs> the pec minor will engage as well so the pec minor and the lats are the main ones that cause that yeah. depression see there is a valid reason for him not having his <laughs> shirt on we wanted him to be able to see all these muscles exactly <laughs> And the funny thing about depression is it makes you happy, <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. <laughs> right? <laughs> so instead of having your shoulders up around your ears all the time, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. So this is very important for when you start doing your high plank and so on yeah. to be able to understand how to 
to press, to pull the shoulder toward the hips. And just to clarify those movements, those people, because when we say ret retraction and protraction, it's okay, but for, for the student that yeah. might not know the words, yeah. then... You think about forward is yeah. protraction and back is retraction. And with the scapula moving towards the spine. As far yeah, as so pulling yeah, yeah, the back toward the spine and mm. then moving forward away, away from, from the, the spine. spine. Yeah. Yeah. So, sorry, scapula is shoulder blade. Yeah. Yeah, the shoulder blade. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, <laughs> if we uh, just take our first vinyasa ekam. Yeah. I'll just face the camera for a moment. So, we uh, want to find a neutral spine. So, pubic bone dropping down and back, coccyx going down and forward, and then you know stacking everything. So, from the side view, you want to have your knees over the heels, hips over the knees. You know shoulders over the hips and then lengthening up through the crown of the head. An important uh, point for your uh, samastiti is the, the two points here the, of the sternum. Mm -hmm. So you want to think about uh, how this to do like flexion of the upper back, right. the sternum here going in. So like the xiphoid process yeah. there going back. Yeah and then to extend that goes forward. Uh -huh. You know, so we can think about moving from those two points, yep. either into extension or flexion of the thoracic spine. Cool. Okay, so when we go to our samastiti here, we want to get an external rotation of the upper arm. Okay, as we, you know, in the old days when the world was not so crowded, mm. you used to be able to take your arms out to the side which was nice, you had this kind of a spiraling action. Uh, but nowadays, because uh, of overpopulation, usually there's not so much space in a yoga class, so yeah. you have to take your arms forward. Yeah. Uh, both are uh, good, so if you look from the side, then you, know, you want to just take the arms and create that spiraling action. And I won't say it's wrong to do this kind of thing, in your sun salute, but in terms of uh, building strength and stability for jump back, jump through, handstand, etc., I like to really emphasize just nothing else moving, just the shoulders. Just the shoulders. You know, so you keep the, uh, the chest, the ribs in as you take the arms up. And so I didn't arch the back, yeah. so I didn't go into this anterior tilt, nor did I shift the hips forward. Yeah. Okay, so just keeping everything uh, stable. And so then the next movement here, or actually, I was sure it's a lot of moving around, <laughs> is uh, so when I took the arms up, actually the scapula went into a protraction. protraction. Okay, so if you look from behind, the scapula are going forward, Go not back, back. Yeah, so the edge of your scapula is here. Yeah. yeah. And so yes. as it comes forward, now the edge of your scapula is here. So it's moved from there across to here, and now it's moving back again towards the center line. So that's what you're thinking about of protraction and then retraction is it coming back towards the center line. Yeah, nice. Yeah, because sometimes I see students, when they take their arms up, they do this. Yeah. They pull the shoulder blades back. Yeah. Okay, and it, kinda, it blocks the scapula. Yeah. Okay, so by allowing the, the scalps to protract, yeah. you create more freedom of movement. And even that angle that you're going up there now, that 45 degree yeah, angle, this it's sort of nicer than straight yes. out the side. Yeah, straight you can do side, mm. this 45 is nice, yeah. or front if you're in a crowded chala. Yeah. <laughs> so here, and then, so the next movement is from here to think about trying to reach up, so elevating, Okay. but because we're maintaining the external rotation and that protraction, the shoulders are not going to end up on the ears, okay? For now, mm -hmm. okay? For handstands, we want to bring the shoulders all the way to the ears, okay? okay? But for your sun salutations, you can just think about, you know, creating that protraction, external rotation, and then reaching up, okay? Yeah. Towards ceiling and then keeping the ribs in, stretch the throat and look to the thumbs. Okay? Nice. And then we exhale. Okay, so this one. So as we exhale, we want to move from the hips uh, by 
hinging at the hips, so the hips are going to go backwards slightly. If you need to, you'll bend the knees, or do it with legs straight. Okay, so instead of just rounding the back, mm -hmm. which is another approach, but uh, not that's a different mm -hmm. method. Okay, so here, hips go back, lengthening through the crown of the head, and then just depending on your flexibility, whether you're gonna bend the knees or straighten, keep the legs straight, what I'm looking for is to keep the chest and thighs touching, mm. so n not here. Yep. So if you need to, bend the knees as much as you need just to get the chest and thighs touching. And where are you putting your hands and relative, am I jumping ahead, where your hands are relative to your feet? So it's going to depend on uh, flexibility and, you know, so like usually my first one, I can't get my hands here and uh -huh. legs straight, so I might be more here. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I'll even be here. Okay, so the m important thing is to try to uh, get the shoulders in a good position as well. So by when we're here, this is a, the best way to feel it is actually take the hands behind. And you see when I take the hands behind and bring the elbows in, yeah. so that's already the external rotation of the upper arm and protraction of the shoulder blades. Yeah, so again, the edge of his shoulder blade is about there. Where as against it? back here somewhere. A lot of the times, you know, people a bit too excited to try and get their head to their knees end up going mm. like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we want to just elbows in and draw it back. Bring yeah. the shoulder you blades. can really see the difference. Yeah, like it all this. looks so bunched up there, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And right. then, you know, that's m people are sitting at the computer all day like this. Yeah. And then they come to yoga class and, and do, do the, the same, same thing. <laughs> so you want to try and just create more space. Yeah. Kay. And not only that, it just, this is a good pattern to create. It's going to uh, translate to many other things. So scap spreading, elbows in. Yeah. So if you do it with the hands flat on the floor, you bring the elbows in. And think about pressing your hands forward. Uh, at the same time, your elbows are going to go backwards. Okay, and then you'll see it creates the same positioning. So, elbows in, hands pushing forward, elbows going back. Okay, instead of like this. Yeah, cool. So, elbows in. And the weight on your feet, is that relatively even or, or towards, more towards the... Yeah, so I want to bring the hips pretty much over the heels, uh -huh. so I'm not going to be back back, there. back here. Yeah, so weight over the heels, balls of the feet, centered, you know, over the cent midfoot. So that would be this way. And then three knee, you know, different schools of thought. Some people say you should come all the way up here, work more on your spinal extension uh -huh. and lengthening the hamstrings more. Or others say, you know, you need to keep the hands flat to the floor. Uh, what I do think you do in your own practice? It depends, you know. Some, yeah. Sometimes I like because there's I f there's more movement mm -hmm. for the spine here if I come up under the fingertips compared to here. So, it yeah depends. depends. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, the important thing is that when you lift up to Trini, shoulders towards the hips. Yeah. And same here, shoulders toward the hips. And then we're trying to like, move this mid lower back inwards. An extension. Yeah, instead of being flexed here. Yeah. We're trying to move in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then what everyone's waiting for da -da -da. is the jump back. Okay. But before we do that, <laughs> we're going to step back. <laughs> okay. So bring the hands forward for most people. Even if it's like your first sun salute of the morning, you know, you probably don't want to jump back straight away, so. <laughs> Talk about the first four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, you know, when you're younger, you can do that, right? Oi. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, as before we step back, you want to set the shoulders first, so we protract and depress here. Okay, I'm going to step back to the high plank, okay? And just going to take a moment here and just Re look at those shoulder movements and the, nice. the hel pelvis pattern again. Yeah. So, uh, if we just 
first I'll start with the lumbar spine. So we just pull the shoulders to the hips just to stabilize. And so just looking at the lumbar, so we have that anterior tilt and then the posterior tilt. Okay, so just being able to isolate that movement. Like a lot of people do this cat cow mm. kind of thing, mm. but they're moving the whole spine. Yeah. So we want to just be able to do it, uh, just isolate the segments of the spine. Yeah. So. I mean, the thoracic area still goes up a little bit, but. Yeah, because I mean, it's all it connected, can't, right? Yeah. It yeah. Not go up. Uh, so once we find understand that, then we'll just bring the pelvis back to a neutral position. Are you actively drawing your shoulders back all the time that you're moving in the lumbar area? This one, I'm just yeah keeping that depression the whole, time. the whole time. Okay, so yeah. I want to keep the lats we engaged. Can see them. That's them there. Yeah. So we can sort of see it working as he's drawing it back. Yeah. And so that's also going to connect you into you know your Mulabanda Udiana because everything you know the fascia everything is connected, right? So mm. you see that muscle connects right in down here. So it's going to trigger all those muscles to to work. Uh, so then we isolate the T-spine, thoracic spine, so just working on the flexion, like angry cat, and then trying to go into the thoracic extension without just collapsing or bending mm. the elbows and without letting the lower back bend like that. So th this is really this is pretty hard to do this actually, to try to just isolate the thoracic spine into extension. Yeah. Uh, what you need to think about is again that point, the bottom of the sternum there. Yeah, that's then where the ribs start to flare apart. Yeah, yeah. so here, yeah. just trying to push, like if you had your thumb here, you're trying to push against it. Mm. Okay, and so just figuring out how to get that. And then we work on the movement of the scapula, so retraction and protraction. Yeah. Retraction. So shoulder blades pulling together. As you pull them together, don't let them come up to the ears. So still depressing, yeah. shoulder blades together. Protracting, and this is what I notice a lot is when people protract, they end up also elevating. Mm. So we want to keep the depression as we protract. You'll notice my spine is moving up and down a little bit yeah. as I'm going, I'm, not, I'm trying not to go. Yeah like this through the spine. I'm more or less trying to keep the spine in neutral and just the Work scapula. The yep. yeah. And so then from there, we can take... And the just so breath, does it matter with the breath on that? On those ones, you can yeah. just uh, breathe just naturally. Breathe naturally? Yeah. Okay. Uh, then we go to high plank. Okay, yeah. so in the high plank, we're going to again, figure out those patterns. So anterior tilt, Posterior tilt, yeah. anterior, posterior. I want you to keep the posterior tilt, and then you can try those scap push-ups. So protraction and retraction, protraction, retraction, and then you're going to hold the protraction and depression. Mm. Okay, without overarching the upper back. Yeah, because that looks just nasty as well. So I mean, <laughs> see that a lot of the time. People have heard about this protraction and yeah. it just lands up at a nasty, hyperkyphotic spine. Yeah, 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 spine. yeah. Angry cat. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the whole way. Even I used to do a lot of that angry cat. Yeah. But now I've kind of realized, okay, that's, uh, you want to try just to isolate more through the scapula. Okay, nice. Yeah, okay, so here we're there. And then we go to Chaturanga. So before you go to Chaturanga, make sure that you create an external rotation mm. okay so it's like you're trying to twist your hands okay. away from each other are you still rolling in the lower arm or are you letting this roll out too looks the like that's rolling out i'm going to let it roll out because okay. as i lower down to chaturanga i want my elbows to go backwards uh -huh. okay so if i if i block that movement yeah and work there then as i go down the elbows are going to go out okay so you're letting it yeah. all roll from the yeah, yeah so nice. we're, we're here externally rotate and then start to lower down uh-huh okay and that's actually doing it on the knees is a pretty honest way to do it so here elbows in so as we lower down try not to let the hips change position the ribs in 
And there your arms are just brushing your sides, aren't they? They're not jammed up against them and they're not coming yeah, away too far. Yeah, and not bringing the elbows in <laughs> here. <laughs> to rest yeah. on. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> see people do that. They've heard our elbows in, so they balance like that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I'm not letting, not them, out. letting the elbows go out. Okay. You, I mean, you can let the elbows go out a little, uh, but not like flaring out yeah. too much. And as you're going down, are yeah. you keeping that rotational energy in the hands? Yeah, mm. like that. And then really focusing on the depression. Yeah, so okay. keeping the shoulders down. Yeah. I mean, s you can do it protracted or you can bring into retraction. Okay, so that's the two different techniques. Okay, maybe for yeah. different body types. Yeah, and diff different strength like requirements. Um, like for if you're learning how to do a planche, yeah, you know what that is. That's like the forward balance. Yeah, exactly. Can you show us? <laughs> Patch. Yeah, so a planche. I can't do a planche, but basically <laughs> in yoga we do like we call it lolasana. So this is lolasana. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. Um, a plant is doing the same with thing, straight but legs. with your legs <laughs> back. <laughs> yeah. A different world altogether. Hey! And for that, you need full protraction. Yeah. So doing protracted uh, push ups is a way to train that okay, movement. To get into there. Yeah. But for the most of us, for most of us, uh, we can do it with let the sh you can retract, yeah. pull the shoulder blades together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, as you go down, <laughs> that high plank, shoulders down, ribs in, tailbone tucked a little, yeah. and then come in. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I like to, personally, I prefer the head in neutral position, just yeah. looking down at the mat. Not like that. Okay, not with the chin yeah. forward, just personal preference. Mm. Uh, reason being, get a nice line through the head. Yeah, like when you, if you're like this, this connects your anterior chain yeah. from the pelvic floor up. Okay, yeah. so it keeps all your abdominal muscles engaged. Yeah. As soon as you do this, yeah. usually what happens is the lumbar goes into extension mm. like this, and the belt you lose that connection. And if you were standing, you wouldn't be standing like that. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, like, like if you're standing, you say yeah. chaturanga is something like this. Yeah. It's not like yeah, exactly. this. But, you know, that's just, uh, that's what I like we to like teach. We like to nitpick here. Yes, exactly. <laughs> just trying to take everyone to the next level. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, come in. Cool. And then, so when we go to the upward dog, I'm just going to, actually, even I like to do upward dog like this these days. Uh -huh. but, uh, Any reason? Uh, just because... Still with the knees off the floor. One reason is because if I like to do my chaturanga more like this, okay. with the elbows over. Uh, over the wrists. Okay, you so don't send them back. Then to get from there, you end up either too, exactly far, too forward, far forward, or you have to make some adjustment, pushing yeah. back first before you Thank roll God. over. Yeah. So just to stop from having to do that, okay. you can work like this. Also, I like feel like I can lift my legs higher up. When you're on your toes, yeah. but you're still pressing the heels back. Yeah, yeah. standing okay. this way. But that's uh, another subject. So and on the way down, a lot of people tend to poke their ass in the air because it makes it a little easier, don't they? So not to Going to Chaturanga? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> like so not the confuse that, yeah, that tuck with that overemphasis of the bum in the air. Because when you're, when you're tucking is one way and that's going completely the opposite way. Isn't it? Yeah, so hips are going down this towards way. the floor. Yeah, not yeah. the other way. Ribs are coming up yeah. away from the floor and hips are going down yeah, towards the way. floor. Knees are lifting away yeah. from the floor. Yeah. So we go down and then we'll do it that way. <laughs> and then, so for your upward dog, you want to depress the scapula uh -huh. as you retract. A lot of people, when they retract, end up elevating, so they end up sinking, like this, thinking that they're bending their upper back more. More, but they're just but tilting their head. Just, yeah, just <laughs> tilting their head. Yeah. Okay, so that same, hello doggy. <laughs> so that same point here. Yeah. So if you imagine you're pushing forward there. Yeah. So that's what it should, that's this is, bit. the upward dog should feel something like this. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. If you're. You're kind of getting that external rotation through the arm. Yeah. 
shoulders down, yeah. retracted, and then focusing on this, this point point. here, pushing forward and up. Yeah. Okay, so I'll show that from the back view. So you have that external rotation of the upper arm. Yeah. And then scapula down, retracted, and then that point is pushing forward yeah. and up. Okay, so you You're can going see to a massive hollow here. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> up here, right? Yeah. So that's where we're trying to get yeah. rather than just just moving up. The just yeah. moving the lower back lower and back. the neck. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we tried to create that same feeling in the upward dog. So shoulders to press, retracted. We have the external rotation, but you want to ground here through the thumb and first two fingers, so the yeah. counter rotation. And then that point, at the bottom of the sternum going forward and up. And then as you take, you can either just keep the head more in a neutral or take the head back. Okay, and cool. then coming out of it, either go back through that high plank and roll back. If you want to release your lower back, or if you want to try to like increase your back bending, then imagine your tailbone and your the crown of the head creating a circle towards each other. Yeah, and so then we come to the downward dog. Okay, so, you know, I'll use, if I want to uh, lengthen my lower back or yeah. even prepare for leg behind the head, then I'll go back through the high plank because that's going to activate my core and start to stretch the lower back. And give more strength. Yeah, yeah. and so that will be like a counter pose for back bends okay. and a preparation for leg behind the head. Or if I want to start getting my back warmed up for back bending, then I'll use that other, the other, other version when okay. I come back like this yeah yeah okay cool so then it gets us to our the downward dog so the we're ready to jump through we're getting there we're oh getting there oh come on <laughs> <laughs> we're almost there stewie <laughs> <laughs> you gotta you gotta pay to play <laughs> pay to play yeah <laughs> all right so we look at our, our puppy <laughs> okay so scaps again so protraction yeah and elevation Okay, we can also retract and depress. So protract, elevate, retract, depress. Yeah. So, so again, it's just this movement, it's just this area that's moving. Everything else is staying the same. Yeah, and then we yeah. can go back the other way, depress, retract, elevate, protract, depress, retract, elevate, depress. And we want to try and bring that into our downward dog. Yeah. So in the downward dog, we're going to protract yeah. and elevate. elevate. Okay, so a lot of people get confused. They're always told shoulders away from the ears. Yeah. So they end up de depressing. Uh -huh. So when you're depressing, it's like it's like it's a pulling movement. Okay, so if I was here like this, to depress, I'm going to pull. Pull, yeah. Okay. Uh, so you you lose that connection to the floor. Uh -huh. okay, okay, we want to push, but we still first, want to yeah. yes. So first protract, yeah. externally rotate the upper arm, and then yeah. elevate. So we can see from that camera angle that you still got nice space in here. Yeah, it hasn't all just like bunched up around it's the neck. It's not like this. Yeah, yeah. So when you go into your, I actually like to go into the downward dog. <laughs> Creating that shape first in a kneeling position, mm -hmm. so protract and elevate, and then just lift the knees a little bit off the floor. Yeah, feeling contact between the knees and the thigh, uh, the thighs and the ribs, and then start to straighten the legs, keeping that contact and without losing, so without losing the shoulder position. Yeah, so it's staying, sa staying the same, staying open the yeah. whole way. Yeah. yeah, and there's still that pushing, still spreading as I start to straighten the legs. Okay. Cool. So for now, just trying to find a straight line from the hand through the hip. hip. 
And for those people that are not going to be able to straighten their legs because of their hamstrings, then just do it uh, with the uh, knees bent. Keep the knees bent. Yeah. More to get that straight line from the hips is more important than straightening the legs. Yeah, so we can just, yeah. you know, this is a yeah. starting point and then start to work. Yeah. Just like this. Okay. You know, even like really flexible people love to do it like this. Go through too much. Yeah, and mm. which is fine, uh, but you kind of lose that understanding of how to use the floor and transfer that energy from the floor out through the hips. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Yeah. So it's like the line gets broken it's here. It's collapsed, yeah. So we want to just be more pushing here. And then maybe you, can, you could bring the chin in and look towards the navel, but without losing that connection. And with the hands, what are they doing? Hands, uh, you can, if you need to, if you can't understand the external rotation, yeah. one trick is to think about twisting the hands out. The uh -huh. same, like, same like as I did before I went down into Tataranga. Yeah. So right hand turning clockwise, left hand turning count yeah. counterclockwise. Because your hands are stuck to the floor, They're not going, you're pressing but, yeah. here and here, yeah. especially. I mean, you're pressing the whole hand, but yeah. especially there then what happens is the shoulders yeah. start to move. So here, twisting there. Yeah. Uh, you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, easy to see. Yeah, good. Okay, and now, now. the moment we've all been waiting <laughs> for. <laughs> okay, so we're going to practice frog jumps. Have we done these? No. No? Okay. So we have to come into a squat, mm. squatting position. Uh, if you can't squat the heels down, you can do it with the heels up. And we just bring the hands forward. And we just. Am I in your way? Yeah, in a little bit. So just hop forward to start with. And then hop back. So when you hop forward, we want to get protraction and depression. Mm hmm. And make sure you come to a good squat each time. As you start to get more comfortable with the movement, then you start to try to find a little bit of balance. Okay. So jump up. So you're going balance. a little high, hips up first, and then thinking of them coming forwards. Yep, and then we go back. So hips back. and back. The shoulders now have to start coming over the fingertips mm -hmm. to get the balance point. And, and are you, I saw then you're just doing that a little bit with your fingers, are you? Yeah, just gripping, a yeah. little bit of uh, the spider grip. Yeah. yeah, so not just completely splayed out and flat. Yeah, so this okay. is, uh, I mean, this is uh, the technique for that. So you want to, you press the heel of the hand and then the base of the knuckles, fingertips, and then you say like the first knuckle from yeah. the base of the knuckle bends. Yeah, and then do that. Oh, but keep the, yeah. Yeah, keep the, keep the, the rest of the hand rest connected. Of the hand a lot together. of people end yeah, up that doing comes this. Away. Mm. Yeah, cool. Okay, so that's a little spider little grip. Spider grip. Spider man. <laughs> and the next thing to be aware of in this one is that you're going to bring your knees towards your armpits mm -hmm. as you jump. So knees in as you come down. A lot of people, when they do this, they end up kicking their heels towards their bum. So yeah, they like a donkey. Kind of do this. Yeah, boink. Yeah. Like that. So they end up going. Yeah. And that's and then they never find the point of balance. So it's more like a crunch. Uh, so I'm jumping in, trying to bring my ribs and thighs together. Together. So jump forward, knees in. Yeah. And, and there, down. it's how I mean you are working, but. It's not a lot of effort, is it? Like when not people jump, much. it's like they're yeah. trying to leap over something, <laughs> like a dustbin or something. But actually, it's just a more of a transfer of weight, isn't yeah. it? That's what it looks like. Yeah, it's not, it's mm. not, I'm not having to work too hard. Yeah. Yeah, so. There, knees to yeah. armpits. And on the way back, same thing. Lean forward, knees to armpits. And then back. And push back. Okay, and then, you know, you can keep taking it further. Okay. Jumping higher up. If you want, toe tap, and then down. Yeah. Okay, so again, it's that, uh, it's I get the hips higher up, but I'm trying to keep my thighs to the ribs. To the ribs. So they're on your ribs first, yeah. And then I can come in like this. Yeah. 
But again, you need pretty pliable, this flexible you need legs, to, don't you? You need to have the flexibility, yeah. for sure. And so that, you know, that is a, takes you to the next point. So when you're in a downward dog preparing to jump, yeah. so you're going to be doing it with your feet apart like this, and you're going to be landing with your feet together. But so first you, you bend, yeah. try to bring that contact. Rib cage to thighs. And thighs, and then jump, and do a little hop. Mm. Like that, landing on the balls of the feet to start with, and then hands here, then straighten the legs, head up, inhale, and then exhale, fold forward. Then as you get uh, a little stronger, a little more flexible, then you do the same thing, you jump, and start to land closer to the feet, yeah. and start to place the feet, you know, more flat, as you land and you inhale, exhale, bend forward. So then eventually you're starting to work towards working with straighter legs and bringing the feet in closer to the hands each time, you know. And so as you get stronger, as the f hamstrings get more flexible, yeah. you're able to get closer in. So eventually you can jump there. straight legs. And okay. is your gaze shifting at all while you're doing that jump? Or are you keeping it from the down dog? Where are you looking relative to where you're looking when you finish? So technically, you want to look, you know, here, if that's where you want to land. Uh-huh. You know, so you'll be looking there. And so you look at the same spot all the time? Yeah. Okay. Um, when you start getting this close in, yeah. the shoulder position starts to change a little bit. Okay. Okay, so when you start, you want to here, and then you s actually need to elevate because you've got to try and make your arms as long as possible. To give you like space for the More legs. S yeah, space yeah. for the legs. If you're down like this, okay. you know, you can see your arms not as yeah. long. So yeah. lengthen. So as you jump, you got to shoulders have to come to the ears. Press away. Okay, so it's you know one of the only times in yoga where we actually want the shoulders to the ears. Yeah. 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 Cool. And so, for the you know this for the jump back, it's the reverse. So, for example, we jump. So a beginner or someone is just learning is jumping here. When they jump back, they have to remember that there was this much difference. So they would be, say they've gone, they were doing the sun salute. Inhale, yeah. The way exhale, whatever it is. Yeah. Trini inhale. If they try to jump from here, they won't be able to. So ah. they have to bring the hands forward first. Okay, so the same Lift distance. the heels up, create that stability, shoulders down, push up. Yeah. And then they jump back. Yeah. Okay, so as you get closer in, you yeah. just remember what that distance is going to be. Because a lot of people, when they jump, they if their hands are too close, they end up doing something like... Mm. Yeah. Having to hop one foot at a time. Yeah. Yeah. We're looking to land with that same tucked pelvis as when you did the chaturanga yes. at the beginning. Exactly. Okay. So I prefer most people to go to high plank first. I was going to say because... Until they've yeah. developed a, enough control that they can also do it to chaturanga but keep the yeah. same alignment. Yeah. Okay, so... Because otherwise it's all a bit unstable, isn't it? Yeah. If you just jump to the bottom with a big flop like a dead Absolutely. fish. Absolutely. So I'll yeah. show you. Um, so yeah, the, the jump back, as you get more flexible, you're going to be able to either work, you know, hands here or eventually hands there. right here. So for now, I'll just do it here. So we're going to... So this is where we need to elevate. Okay, so I have to round the back. Uh-huh. And as you're protracting there too? Yeah, protracting and, and elevating. elevating. As I lean forward, still with the gaze here, uh -huh. and you can lift the heels up and lean into it. Boink. And jump back. Yeah. Good high plank first, before you lower down all the way. Or, okay, so I'll do the hardest one now. So hands right next to the feet. Yeah, I thought you were going easy. <laughs> so here we are, we have to protract and also you can see the spine is going to a big flexion now yeah so I'm having to round the back yeah and i'm trying to bring my thighs into my ribs so it's 
Oh, I said I wasn't going to sit down, but I am. No, you're good. It's okay? Yeah. So basically, if you want to feel what that is, if you sit like this, bring the hands here, and try to do these pike leg lifts. Looks hard. Or well, you're making it. It look is hard. hard. <laughs> <laughs> Try it, Stuart. No, no, no. I would hate to interfere. <laughs> so <laughs> I'd that, have to take my shirt that off. is like you really feel exactly what's going on. It's the hip flexors yeah. and your core having to. So that's what we're saying that is that is what you're doing when you're getting ready to jump. Yeah, and so when you're jumping forward and you're trying to bring your feet close to your hands, yeah, that's what's that's happening. That action. Yeah, and when you're jumping back before you lift. That's what you have to engage. That's the same action. No wonder yeah. I can't do it. <laughs> so do it now. <laughs> do it now. <laughs> yeah. So we're here. So I'm trying to. There. It's called a compression, right? So uh -huh. my thighs and my ribs have got Squeeze to compress. Them together. Shoulders to ears. Yeah. And protract. Yeah. And now is when that action is coming, is it? Yeah. yeah. And then it's opening up. And yeah. so when I land. Everything yeah. switched on, so yeah. I'm not collapsed in the shoulders. Yeah. My lower back's not collapsed. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And okay. so for, for the people that it's just like they feel that their arms are going to break before they can support their weight when they're in that position to actually jump back. Is there any from e Trini? So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is there an easier apart from? Obviously, you've got stepping to put your back stepping back is like stage. super easy. Yeah, but and then, then that stage between the two is like really hard. Isn't yeah, it? so just work so on those progressions. Just take stage. your hands further forwards. Yeah, so this would be like mm. after stepping back. So stepping back, stage one. Yeah. Stage two would be this. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, stage three, stage just four. Just gradually moving like them this. in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Jump through. Jump through. Okay, so we're going to remove the mat. Ah, okay. Okay. So oh, something for We're going to put the yoga mat business out of, uh, yoga mat companies out of business. Out of business. <laughs> Get back okay. to the ground. Yeah, so we're going to come back to these frog jumps. Uh-huh. And so we're going to just practice just hopping to like a modified lolasana. Okay. Like this. Just real soft and gentle. Like really that. soft, exactly. And work on that compression, so knees in, ribs mm -hmm. touching, knees and th thighs and ribs touching, and then slide through, back to the spot. Okay, so never quite put your butt down. Yeah, never touching the butt. Yeah. yeah so let's show it from the side. So here, just a little, it's just like a little hop. So hence no mat, because you're going to get stuck otherwise. Yeah, you? exactly. Yeah. So here. Maybe you could wear and socks as well, if yeah. you're a little bit. Definitely. Mm. Socks mm. is uh, socks and wooden floor or mm. tiles like this. Yeah, mm. concrete. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So that's like stage one. Here, well, stage one is probably, you could say, stepping first. Yeah, then pulling. And then sliding. Okay, and coming put back the bum down, yeah, to the squat. And go. If you need, need be, use blocks. Okay, this. yeah, yeah. We were talking about this yesterday, weren't we, off camera about proportions oh, and yeah. things, and there's, it's no big deal. Use blocks <laughs> if you need them, yeah. isn't it? I, yeah. That's one thing I, I wish I had been, you know, told, in the told early that days it was okay to use when blocks when you had shorter arms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just because, uh, like I was saying to you yesterday, even gymnasts, Olympic gymnasts, are not yeah. required to do yeah. what stungies are required to do in terms yeah. of these jump throughs, yeah. right? They use parallettes, they use yeah. parallel bars, yeah. so they have more height to clear. Yeah. So We well, also said yeah. as well that body proportions, that not everybody is designed to yeah. be able to jump through. Yeah, so you totally. this is fun. Yeah. So you shouldn't beat yourself up about it if yeah. you find it really difficult. And don't break your body trying to do it. Yeah, exactly. You know, and also, unless you're practicing the full movement, so yeah. that swing through, yeah. uh, you won't actually uh, be able to train the muscles to do it. Mm. So if you're having to always like stop and then sit down and take your feet, or you're having yeah. to roll forward like this, yeah. you're missing that that part, that, key that swing thing through, right? So, so better to use blocks in use that Use a case. block so you can actually train, and that's like where you actually get the mm. extra strength, right? Okay, cool. Yeah, so then 
with our frog jumps. We want to then start working towards finding the balance point before we, we come <laughs> it back. Looks to this so part. Easy, <laughs> it? it looks so easy, doesn't it? It looks so easy. And everybody's watching this thinking, I can do that. <laughs> just won't ever go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but actually, uh, when I teach this, a lot of people have breakthroughs. Yeah. Because or a break lot of people, when they're jumping through, they kind of they finish the movement here. Yeah, like such a drag. And then they yeah. kind of take their hands off yeah. and then they go like this. But yeah. by making them think they've got to get to the squat, yeah. they realize that it's like a swing. Yeah. And then they end up kind of having this breakthrough where they realize that that's the movement. Yeah. Okay, it's not that they're having to force and work like really yeah. s strongly, you know? So, yes. so then as you get more and more fancy, then you can start to try to go up. Cross. Through. And through. Yeah. Okay. Um, There's different trajectories. That would cut me out and tell me to come <laughs> back later if I'm yeah. getting out of sync. But some people, <laughs> like yourself, Kino, jump super high like that and come down real slow. Yeah. Other people, like I think Tim Feldman, different build. Yes. He prefers to stay lower and yeah, yeah, keep yeah. the whole thing coming through lower. Yeah, some people, like I can't, if you, like, I wouldn't, I can't do that fast, low trajectory one. Yeah. Uh, my body's just not built for not that. Not built for that way, yeah. Like, I could do it if I, if I lift my hands up. Right. Like, if I do it like this, I can do yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. That's what you mean, right? That or Some people kind of, they stay low they stay much with a lower. bit more yeah. speed. Yeah, and come through, yeah. Like this. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas if I try to do that with my hands flat, I always end up kind of doing... Yeah, getting caught <laughs> on the way somewhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So, for me, I have to get that height first. Yeah. I think you yeah. en engage, I mean, you could see it, you actually working on control and engagement if you go up, 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 up like that, yeah. rather than just yeah, the through. Speed. Just Sometimes I wish I could do it with the speed because it saves a lot more energy. I think it does, yeah. <laughs> but then you're not engaging much, Yeah, it's really, not teaching you, like, for me, that's how I learned to do things like Karandavasana yeah. and so on, because I had to work so hard in my jump throughs and jump backs. Yeah. Even the Bakasana is sometimes yeah, the same. Bakasana is the same. Lift exactly. the jump to Bakasana. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Mm. Yeah. Cool. So the jump back, uh, you can use a similar technique. So you can just think about sliding. So just sliding one foot, then the other. And, and back, to, back squat. to squat. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Take the hands behind, cross the feet, slide. And back to a squat. Mm. Okay, so jump forward, slide, and come back. Nice. So it's like you're using the floor. It's ma you're making it your friend. Yeah, yeah, it looks yeah. really nice. Yeah. And it feels, looks, I say feels, I'm not doing it, but it looks yeah. really fluid. Yes. And that's a, a nice way of thinking about it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Like a fluid motion rather than. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, instead of having to work like yeah. so hard all the time. Yeah. Yeah, and cool. then you start to, f you can connect those two movements if you, as you get stronger, so okay. it'll be like, jump up, and then up. up. And then up and back the other way. And back, yeah. Yeah, okay. And it's obviously starting to get a bit harder Yeah. at that point. And are you going to tell us about just breaking down that jump back as to if we want to do it? To go to Chaturanga? Yeah. Or to yeah, yeah. Okay, so... As we were talking about yesterday, there's mm. the straight arm, mm. like going to a straight arm and then, uh, or going to bent. So, so you could show us a straight arm because they're like, I mean, how many, what percentage of people are going to be able to do it? One? One, <laughs> <laughs> one percent of people, Not I think, with a straight arm. And Not too many. A prerequisite for that anyway is to have a very good uh, lolasana. Okay. Okay, so, so you need to be able to hold this position. That position. Yeah. And you can lift to that from to that from the ground, can't you? Yes. Or is it better to jump into yeah. it? Yeah, so you can lift to it from the ground, lift feet crossed, to get into it, depress, protract, and then lift up. Yeah. You have to really try to work the elbows straight. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So for the jump back, to get to there, then I'm going to keep hitting this. Back the here. mic. The yeah. mic, yeah. 
So, yeah, so here. So we try to get back to that point. Yeah. And then elbows in, head down, feet back. So that was the easier version. That's the <laughs> bent arm version, or the straight arm. No, that I went first to the straight arms, yeah. and then went to what happened? <laughs> well, they went half and half. I reckon you can do better than that. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I think the bum needs to go higher. Oh, even higher? Yeah. <laughs> okay. More fancy. Yeah, I don't even need to bend at all, do they? So the, can you jump from there with the straight arms, with straight arms jump back? Yeah, but so you've got to get to Chaturang, you have to bend your elbows, right? If, can you land with a straight arm? Really? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Oh, is that what you want me to do? Maybe. Oh, yeah, I can do that. Come on, then, let's see it. Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> I just can think of more and more difficult things for him to do. Oh, th <laughs> this is another good little cheat that I like for the jump back is so, uh, as a, like a stage. Yeah. In s as you just lift here. Yeah. Then bring the feet already on yeah. top of the hands. Okay. So then you just lean forward and then lift it up. Flip through. So that's a halfway stage. Yeah, okay. So that was what I think you thought you were going to do. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So then there's one in between the two where their arms bend and you jump back. And then the one that most of us are going to do yes. is the lift and then bend Swing. their elbows. Yes, exactly. So what stage do they bend at? Okay, so... Yeah, let's see. As the feet, basically, once the feet go behind the hands, yeah. then there's going to be that transition. Okay. Head forward, okay. bend the elbows. And where are you looking? So... Forward. Forward, <laughs> forwards and up or forwards on the, on the ground? So again, I try not to do, to do that too much. I'm going to keep my head in neutral the whole time. Okay, so lift up. See, I'm here. Yeah. Head down. Yeah. Okay, so you're l finishing with the head facing the floor. Yeah. Not with the head facing forward. No, so okay. I want to try and use the head as a counterweight. Counterweight. So the head goes down and the hips are going to go back. Uh huh. Yeah. Cool. Can we see that again? Yeah. Um, so really, this is where all that high plank to chaturanga, mm. all that sun salute, all that stuff is really just comes into play because yeah. as you jump back, you want to make sure that you've got that external rotation, shoulders are locking in. Yeah. Okay. So each time you land, you're landing in a solid, uh, stable position yeah. instead of, I can see a lot of people land all like this up. All, the, mm. all the time. With the shoulder lower than the elbow as well. And the yeah, yeah. And up here. Yeah. And you know, you start to get all these kind of uh, problems through yeah. the anterior yeah. shoulder capsule and yeah, you see a lot. Good. So okay. Yeah. So in segments then, so just the slow time this one, just can you just tell us where you're looking and everything and what you're doing as you're going through it? Yeah. So. <laughs> 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 we want to try to drive up. I mean, technically, this the first part of this movement should be... Be a lift. It should be a lift. I Goes to. I often lift first and yes. then go back through. Yeah, 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 exactly. So that's great to, yeah, you can do to that. do that first. Yeah, so lift up. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that made it harder for you, oh. poor thing. And back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. Cool. So, again, it's the same sort of thing. Don't, you know, this is hard yeah, stuff, isn't it? This is it? hard stuff. And, and even I don't do this the whole practice, yeah. you know. It's like, yeah. if I do that every time, you know, like, it's like you have to be an Olympic gymnast. To do you it. Know? So, it's enough just to do a, a few each practice yeah. like that. And if you, I mean, obviously, if you start to build up the endurance and the, the yeah. conditioning, you can do it. Yeah. Uh, but and what about where you place your hands when you're getting ready to do it? Do you place them forwards or you place them? Yeah, place forward. Place forward. Forward. Yeah. And then hips go forward. And yeah. Up. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So yeah. hitting this mic every time. So yeah, hands are going to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Not okay. back here. Cool. So here, lean forward. Forwards. Oh, that was better. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. So the next stage, now I've got to bring my head down. And back. Cool. And so like ninety percent of people yeah. get stuck At with that the toe point. tap with that the back. Yeah. And then they've got they have to toe tap to jump back. Yeah. So how do you get from that to the whole way back? So a good way is not using a mat. So Okay. Yeah, so if we say that a lot of people get stuck there, here, right? Yeah. So a good way to practice is now to already get that external rotation, head in, 
and push. Okay. Push so and slide back. Push and slide. Rather than a lot of people, when they get to here, they end up hop. Yeah. Jumping. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So that you lose, you're not going to ever build that movement if you do That's that. Straight. Okay. So I'll show you again. So you'll be here. So you're like a lot of people getting stuck here. Yeah. And then bend the elbows, lean forward, and slide back. Slide back. Nice. That's a, yeah, it's a good exercise. I don't know, maybe you've done with Deepika. She showed that one. Yes, I think she yeah, showed some of those. It's kind yeah. of like, yeah. I can't remember what it is now, but yeah, yes. So you're here, sliding. Yeah. So here. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, we were doing that with the towel under Yeah, with the towel, exactly. Last year. Yeah, yeah, brilliant, yeah. Yeah, and so you can, it's basically that's the movement. You're here, and then slide to Chaturanga. Uh, I've seen some people do presses in that the lesson as well or is that a bit extreme <laughs> you see so me do it right <laughs> maybe i've seen you do it but i think is that too extreme for most people do you need to be able to do that i mean it's a uh, i like to make a joke of it like okay okay so, so people understand you've got straight arm yeah lolasana and a bent arm lolasana okay. straight arm strength bent arm strength yeah so this is your straight arm lolasana and your bent arm yeah and then you can go yeah. Between. Between the two. <laughs> but you don't need to be able to do that to be able to jump back. No. I don't think I could do that. No. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's basically doing dips. Yeah. You know, so like on the bars, yeah. doing dips. Yeah, but it seems so yeah. infinitely harder yeah. than dips for yeah. some yeah. reason. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you've got all that body weight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, you don't need to do that. Yeah. You know, okay. it's like you use some more of the, the counterweight. Yeah. So the head going forward hips and going rotation. back nice. yeah head going down hips going up that kind of thing cool do you want to just yeah. summarize the key points to remember because it's it's quite a thing a few things that keep cropping up isn't it yeah. all the way through yeah so you've got the um scapula movement yeah. so those the pro protraction the main one for strength that yeah. you we want is depression and yeah. protraction okay okay when the arm's in this position. Yeah. When the arm goes overhead, yeah. we want protraction and elevation. elevation. Yeah, so yeah. just being able to understand depression and protraction, yeah. protraction and elevation. Uh -huh. Okay, so like for your handstands or yeah. jump, big jump throughs, whatever. Brilliant. So that's uh, one of the main ones. Then also the external rotation and internal rotation of, of the, the arm. Arms. So when we're here, just getting that external rotation yeah. for your chaturanga yeah. um, and then the, the pelvis. To the pelvis. So being able to maintain, most of the time we want a, you know, either a neutral or a posterior tilt. tilt. We don't want to go into this excessive yeah. anterior tilt. Because a lot of people, so when they land, it's a little bit like a trampoline, isn't it? They've lost all their connection yeah, here at Sabrana. Yeah, for sure, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we want to just keep the core engaged. Yeah. Yeah. I like to think about bracing the core yes. rather than sucking the belly in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like uh, just keeping it all firm without yeah. like creating a hollow. Yeah. Without like yeah. sucking in. You know, a lot of people just kind of suck in, but that yeah. doesn't actually create any tension uh -huh. or uh, pressure through the abdominal area. It just, uh, it's just like doing a, like an like Uddiyana a, yeah. type movement, like yeah. Uddiyana Bandha movement. Yeah. Like it's just Sucking your so belly. instead, just brace it. So, so can you show us a brace while you're so there? So when you brace, actually, like if you put your fingers in the side, yeah. you should feel, feel like them push pushing, out. pushing the fingers out. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't mean stick your belly out either. So, so it's not like yeah, it's this. not like that. Yeah. Sure. You're still firming, but yeah. 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 And even if you put your fingers here, yeah, should feel you should, the fingers should be pushing, pushing, getting pushed out. Yeah. Yeah, rather it's a little than drawing in. Yeah, it. rather than uh, yeah. trying to suck them inwards. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea behind all this stuff, because some people might say, you know, oh Christ, just want to jump. <laughs> but it's like <laughs> it, it teaches you to get the activation of the right bits at the right time because yeah. it's all so, so complicated for the body yeah. that you just land up doing any old thing, don't yeah, you? Yeah, so it's going to make the movements more efficient. Yeah. You, you want to get the uh, the the way that the all those elements are like the what's the it's like the vinyasa <laughs> yeah. of the activations mm. 
actually, actually yeah. The right. sequencing is the, probably the, the better key. word. Yeah. So yeah, the sequencing of those activations yeah. and so that those patterns become very natural. Yeah. So that when you start doing more complex movements, you've already got those patterns very well established. Because if you can't do it just standing, you're not going to be able to do it when you're moving, are you? Yes. So there's not a chance in hell. And then when you start yeah. doing more complicated mm. movements, like trying to do a handstand, mm. for example, mm. if you don't understand how to activate your abdominal muscles or how to elevate your scapula, whatever, yeah. you know, or how to control the pelvis. That was my, yeah, so this morning yeah. you were trying to get me to tuck my pelvis when in a handstand. It yeah. was like, oh my God, that's so difficult to do. I yeah, can't yeah. seem to to do it. Yeah, because it's yeah. an open chain. Your feet are mm. not connected, so it's Everything harder to... Everything is moving. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully we're uh. going to pick you up to do a handstand one as too, so keep looking out yeah, for that. Yeah, next week, eh? Hey? Next week. Us yeah. in a, the, the workshop. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, good. Thanks yeah. so much, Mark, and thanks for watching. Thank I hope you really enjoy this. Loads, loads of work to be yeah. doing. <laughs> Sorry, there's a lot of information, guys, but uh, just try to focus on one or two things and get those dialed in and then come keep revisiting the video and then try to add more and more Good understanding and mm -hmm. then yeah nice that's it all that's always the way it is with learning you yeah. pick up one or two things and then once you integrate that then you get ready to move on to the next thing cool brilliant thanks right. mark thank you thanks to you cheers